Good afternoon, Campbell McCreary, Vice President of Capital Markets at Amvest Capital in New York. Welcome to the Amvest Capital Inc. Live webinar with Gold Bull Resources. Gold Bull trades on the TSX Venture as GBRC, it's in Gold Bull Resources, Charlie, and BLSSF on the OTC is in Vol Lima Sierra Sierra Foxtrot. Uh, we hope you'll enjoy it. Today's program will also be available in replay mode. Uh, do feel free to chat in your questions in the question pane of the GoToWebinar or simply email them in and we'll uh, get to them in real time right now. Um, Amvest Capital is a New York-based specialist investment management and corporate finance firm focused solely on the natural resources sector. Very important. Our disclaimer, uh, this call is for informational purposes only. Um, we have with us today uh, Sherry Leiden, uh, the president, CEO, and director of Gold Bull, uh, a geologist by background. Uh, Sherry is a proven resource executive with two decades of experience, including 10 years at publicly traded uh, companies at the board level. Um, she has led businesses in senior positions uh, as well and developed and built several successful resource focused startups. Uh, she has led and help, uh, help leadership positions with Battery Minerals, Rio Tinto, Lionor, and Strike Resources. Um, again, following the presentation, uh, members of Amvest Capital will ask questions of management, and uh, we would love to uh, uh, and we to ask and we solicit your questions to please send them in, and we'll incorporate them into the, the Q and A, and uh, we'll be. Uh, wrapped up in about 50 minutes. So thank you very much. Go ahead. Thank you, Campbell. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you see my screen, Campbell? I can, yep. Yeah, we see the All big right. <laughs> Gold Bull Resources, we, we, we got, the company was born about four months ago um, and we have a mission to become a, a mid-tier US focused gold exploration and development company. Our goal is to have a resource base of 5 million ounces by the end of next year and we're intending to get there via a combination of exploration success and additional acquisitions of existing resources. We're focused on Nevada where most of our team is based. Uh, however, we'll also consider other mining friendly US jurisdictions such as Arizona and Utah. We've got a very experienced team uh, with a track record of, of both uh, exploration success and also capital raising experience and uh, a tight and compelling uh, capital structure. Our commitment is our values and uh, it's something that the board holds very strongly and we ensure that uh, our board and our team are accountable for these values. And um, it starts with safety being um, our, our, our core priority. And that safety culture probably stems from the fact that most of our, our leaders are ex Rio Tinto. So we bring um, that kind of safety culture um, from the majors um, to our, our junior company. Environmental responsibility uh, and ESG is also of the utmost importance in everything that we do. And we start at that exploration phase. Share price hovering around 50 cents. I noticed today it's dipped a little bit, so that represents a, a buying opportunity. We recently did a capital raise at 50 cents. We raised almost 14 million Canadian dollars. Um, the bulk of that money went to purchase the Sandman uh, project, which is our core asset, and um, also to pay for Sandman bond. Uh, we are now very well funded with $7 million cash in the bank, no debt to add value to our um, three projects, which I'll get into. I'm supported on the board um, by some industry veterans, Craig Parry, our chairman. Um, Craig, Craig um, has raised $200 million in the past six months. Um, so this, this is a couple of, out, couple of weeks out of date at 172. So Craig is just a superstar at, at capital raisings in the resource sector. And um, Craig and I go back about 15 years uh, since working at Rio Tinto together. Um, David and I also go back um, about 20 years ago. Uh, we, we've worked together on and off for the past two decades. And David uh, is leading our exploration initiatives as our VP of exploration. Uh, David is a geophysicist, uh, which is a little unusual for an exploration company to have a VP of, of uh, exploration as a geophysicist. And um, I'll explain why we've decided to make that appointment throughout this presentation. 
Gavin Cooper um, keeps our compliance in order. He's a, a CFO with um, TSX Veteran Experience. Lindsay Craig is leading our exploration team. And um, Lindsay's a geologist with over 30 years experience, most of that in Nevada, and he's found multiple million ounce deposits during that time. Uh, Debbie Strusaka is my um, core advisor with respect to environment, community and government relations. And as mentioned, we take that very seriously, commencing at the exploration phase. We're supported by um, some very important advisors. Uh, Randy Vance is helping us at Sandman. Randy has previous experience with the Sandman asset. Uh, we've got um, Vince and um, what Walter calls is our recent appointment to the board. Walter is the CEO of Skeena Resources and, and Craig Parry, our chairman, is also the chairman of um, Skeena Resources. And, what Walter and Craig have achieved in Skeena over the last year or two, you know, taking a $5 million company to a $500 million company um, in a very short period of time based on some barrack non-core assets, is essentially what I'm trying to do here in Goldball. Um, so Sandman is the first acquisition of what we hope will be additional, and um, we're certainly looking to build a mid-tier company out of other companies' non-core assets. Supporting us, we've also got a couple of other advisors and in, um, in James Yates, who is one of the founders of Highcroft, Keith Peck, our financial advisor, and, and Mike really helping with the IR side of things. And um, although it looks like we have a lot of advisors, most of these people are working for either peanuts or no salary, and um, they're all incentivized by options. And um, I feel like we're aligned with our shareholders. The way we're gonna make money is via the same way our shareholders are gonna make money. We also contribute in all our capital raisings on the same terms. So Sandman, we, um, we closed it on just on Monday and 100% um, of the asset is owned by Global Resources. Our valuation is really underpinned by the 310,000 ounces of gold that's already sitting there at the surface. Um, that re resource estimate was done in 2007 and since then there's been a lot more drilling. So we see Sandman opportunity really lays in um, the exploration opportunity. However, its value is really underpinned by the known resources. We've got more than 30 kilometers of strike uh, and it's located conveniently near the town of Winnemucca, which is a, a mining hub in Nevada. Uh, we've got over 300 drill holes that have been drilled, majority of those by Newmont post 2007 resource estimate. So we've got a revised resource estimate currently underway. It's probably gonna be finished um, circa late January and we'll be publishing that revised resource estimate. It's located in a really um, prolific gold trend. Um, there's so many fertile deposits. It's a long strike of the sleeper mine, which was historically one of the most profitable high grade deposits uh, found uh, in the state of Nevada. We're about 25 kilometers to the south of sleeper. We're also on trend of a number of other significant deposits, for example, Twin Creeks and Midas. And uh, we've got our exploration team currently on site and uh, working to define our drill targets, which we hope to commence drilling. Uh, around late January. Part of the acquisition, we've inherited all of this data, there's soil samples, there's rock ship samples, geophysical data sets, drill core, and we're in the process of um, getting a hold of most of these samples, which are currently being stored by Newmont uh, and are in the process of being transferred to, to Goldbull following the acquisition, acquisition closing a few days ago. And this represents millions of dollars of data that we already have. You know, we've had this data for many months now and uh, we've interrogated it. We've found some really compelling exploration targets that have never been before drilled. The data includes all, the, all of this drilling. Um, you can notice most of the drilling was drilled pre-1990, more than half the holes. And uh, of that, the majority of the holes less than 100 meters deep. And a vast number of those holes actually hit the gold mineralization um, which, which is where the current resource stems from. Then during this period um, with the Newmont drilling, much of that drilling was actually a duplication of the pre-1990s drilling uh, for QAQC purposes. Newmont also did um, a lot of metallurgical test work, so we know the recoveries of the existing resource are excellent. The existing resource is going at over one grams a ton um, oxide, essentially at the surface. Um, so I've no doubt that this you know, 300,000 ounces will be mined at some point. However, we're not focusing on feasibility studies yet. Our team is focused on growing this resource base, adding ounces and looking for multi-million ounce discoveries. This is a summary of Sandman. Basically those red boxes indicate where we have known gold mineralization. And that's where the vast majority of the historical work has been focused. 
And we're taking um, a step back approach. We're looking at some of these major structures. We're noticing that most of the structures have never received a drill hole, um, yet they're located on, on known fertile um, geology and fault lines. So this is where our, our geophysicist, Dave Johnson, comes into play. And we're doing a, a lot more geophysics than your average um, junior because we believe that world-class discoveries in Nevada are gonna come from undercover discoveries. And that's where geophysics is absolutely key. Uh, so we uh, recently completed a, a 3D IP survey at our North Hill prospect. That's the one um, located in the very north. And this next slide will detail um, the geology of North Hill. So these polygons um, in the warm colors represent about one gram a ton. And th there is a, a small resource already known at North Hill. However, astonishingly, you can see most of these drill holes, so these black lines are, are the drill holes, they end in mineralization. There's very few deep drill holes, and by deep, I mean 100 meters. Uh, this, this is a scale bar, so 300 feet, it's about 100 meters. So the, the very few holes that do go down to that depth also end in gold mineralization. So we thought this was a great place to start a 3D IP survey app. We haven't got all the data yet, but we've already got really compelling anomalies, and, and we'll release um, the results of that IP survey very shortly once we, um, we have all the data collated and, and Dave has had a chance to interpret these 3D um, IP geophysical anomalies, which tend to represent sulfides. Another selling um, point to, for, for the Sandman asset from Newmont was the fact that Newmont had already gone to the expense and effort of getting a plan of operation. And uh, for anyone who knows the US, the plan of operation is a very detailed environmental permit, which takes a couple of years and costs several million dollars um, to allow a company to then go ahead and, and conduct the ground disturbance. So we're authorized for 500 acres of disturbance. Uh, and um, we, we've got this, this wonderful work by Newmont, cultural surveys, environmental surveys, um, to allow us to now proceed um, with advancing this asset without having to go to that expense or that time consuming effort um, to get those approvals. We're currently in the process of transferring um, those approvals from Newmont's name to Goldpool's name. And as soon as that's completed, uh, we'll be commencing our drill program, which I'm really hoping uh, could be by the end of January. In addition to Sandman, we have two other assets. So most of our funds will be destined for Sandman. Uh, Big Balls and Cody are assets that I consider low risk, high reward in that uh, it's gonna take a few hundred thousand dollars to really know whether we're onto another world-class gold system or whether it's not going to um, meet our criteria for a significant gold play. So Big Balls is located uh, about 10 kilometers to the west of Bald Mountain which is a Kinross operating asset, a five million ounce um, gold deposit. It's located on the prolific Carlin trend and it's also located on the Bider trend. So we're, we're in the right location. The reason why it was available is it's a pediment covered um, prospect. So there's cover, there's no rock sticking out of the ground here. We found this project um, via a combination of geophysics, gravity and magnetics. And uh, we're, we're, just, we're just completing a um, ground magnetic survey at the moment, which and the purpose of that survey is to try and tell us where the most shallow target is within our system um, so we can test that uh, sometime next year. And then there's Cody Project in uh, Western Utah. Um, we're, we've currently got Cody under exclusivity and this one will be closing um, either today or tomorrow. Uh, the deal terms have been in the public domain for a while, $50,000 per year, buys us 100% of the mineral rights to this really exciting asset. Uh, during the due diligence period, our geologist has confirmed we've got 12 grams a tonne of gold and five, over 5,000 grams a tonne of silver, just phenomenal numbers, literally sticking out of the ground. Um, so this is a, a project that has never been drilled deeply. There's been a few shallow holes and some of those holes got some phenomenal numbers, such as the eight grams a tonne over a five feet, very shallow uh, intersection. So again, similarly to big balls, we'll um, do some, some low cost exploration, such as the mapping, um, 3D IP, and then we'll be into a drill program. And again, a couple of drill holes in this, and we're gonna know whether we're onto another world-class discovery or whether this one um, doesn't make um, the cut for, for the company. So I've got a, a wonderful team of mine finders who are, are dedicated to adding ounces in our existing three projects. I personally am spending most of my time looking at additional acquisitions. Uh, we've got a wonderful um, supportive share registry a number of institutions on the registry and they're backing us to find more ounces either via acquisitions or via exploration success. 
So I, I um, like to think that if I can acquire a project cheaper than we can drill it uh, and we can get ounces for cheaper than it would cost um, for us to actually do the exploration, that, that represents a fantastic value proposition for our shareholders. So that's what I'm focused at. We're currently under CA with a number of um, assets and uh, we're really excited by what 2021 is going to deliver both from an exploration perspective and from a potential acquisition perspective. All our team are motivated by shares and options. Um, you know, we're, we're aligned with our shareholders and we've got so much news flow coming. So we've got the results of our geophysical surveys coming up um, before the end of the year. Uh, we've also um, got a whole bunch of work planned for early next year. Um, basically in January, we'll be actively exploring both Coyote and Sandman and uh, drilling will commence as soon as we have our permits in hand at Sandman and I'd like to move our rig from Sandman to Coyote. Um, so we, we hope that next year is going to be a year of a, a, lot, a lot of news flow and ideally a, a lot of ounces to come with that additional work. Here's our contact details. Feel free to drop us a line. Follow us on um, social media. We're trying to be um, active and, and keep our shareholders well informed. So, uh, Sherry, why don't you put up your uh, put your presentation up again? So, see uh, a key slide or something like that. Sure thing. And um, what would be, you know, if just kind of digging a little more on on cash and capital structure and key shareholders and some of that. Absolutely. So um, we've got seven million dollars in cash at the moment. Mm -hmm. And um, during our last um, capital raise, we um, we invited a couple of uh, well-known institutions in uh, from New York. We're, we're um, honored to have Luxor Capital come in. Luxor wow. have made a lot of, a lot of money out of um, at Eskina recently, and, and they're hoping that Goldbull can deliver similar results via a similar strategy. Uh, we've also got a couple of institutions that um, joined our board out of Australia and out of Canada, and um, we're really excited to have some institutions come in at, at this early stage, and they're, um, they're promising access to capital for additional acquisitions, um, you know, if they're done at, at uh, equally as, I guess, attractive terms as what we were able to acquire Sandman for. The Sandman had $20 million worth of data uh, and we purchased it for $4 million. So that's the kind of um, you know, deal we're looking for where we can uh, acquire some of these assets containing existing resources and where we see exploration upside to really add value. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a pretty exciting space to be in. Mm -hmm. um, and can you just talk about how COVID has affected uh, your, your on the ground work? Yeah, fortunately COVID has not impacted on the ground work. Um, certainly impacted um, like our, our lifestyle personally. We're all working from home, and uh, um, you're based in very, Nevada. Is that is that correct? Based in Nevada, yes. Um, you know, COVID is um, quite prevalent um, in our community at the moment, so we're um, making sure that when we are together as a team, we're wearing our masks and so forth. However, it has not impacted our geophysics or our drilling. The nature of our exploration work is, you know, that we're isolated anyway, so we're um, we're ensuring that we um, follow protocols and um, stay safe by wearing masks. And social distancing when not masked however um, work, work is going on as normal um when do you um think um you'll sort of have an updated sort of maiden resource the the updated 43101 um based on our existing data is likely to um, be late january and in addition to that between now and then we'll be well, we've got two completed geophysical surveys and um, we've got um, the sur surface sampling um, to come. We'll have an update on our proposed drill program. Uh, we've got uh, data manipulation and we'll be um, sharing with the market our proposed drill holes sometime in January, I imagine, uh, and um, commencing drilling, um, you know, ideally late January, where the, the permit process is something that um, we're not quite sure if COVID will have an impact on that. So it typically takes less, less than a month to transfer uh, permits from one company's name to the acquirer's name. So we're hoping um, that's running as normal with BLM. Um, and if, if that's the case, we could, we could be out there by late January. And do you have uh, um, drilling drillers in place? Uh, we do, yes. Um, we've got um, our drilling company has already been secured and locked down and, and we've got a great relationship with this drill company and um, are looking to, to keep them on the hook um, for most of next year with the current Can gold you say price. Who they, who they are? Things are pretty hot. 
new, new frontier are our preferred jewel company. Okay, great. Um, Stu, you want a few questions? And we'll yeah, back. yeah. Thanks for the presentation, Sheree. Uh, so, the, what was the deal structure for acquiring Sandman? Because you mentioned there was a bond as well you inherited. Yes, it's um, US $4 million cash, which we have paid in full. So the $7 million left in our um, bank account has already taken you know, taken that money uh, into consideration. So that's been paid, that the seven mil is what we're left with. And the bond for Sandman um, is a $1.3 million bond, which has also been paid. And that um, that allows us that massive surface disturbance of those 500 acres. So essentially we get that bond back if we leave the project, but we don't have any intentions of getting the bond back. You know, we're, we're in this for the long haul. Yeah, and then the bonding in Nevada for a project like this, you kind of do a revised work target every in a time period, don't you? Uh, that's in exploration, but this one is already a plan of operation. So we basically have that um, that bond in place, and that allows us to deserve that massive surface area. Um, so um, it, it's basically just all, all in place and stays in there. And I can't imagine us needing to increase that surface area. It's just a massive. Um, yeah. yeah, fair enough. And then how, do you know how competitive the acquisition, like the deal was in terms of, you know, people you up against? I, I don't really know the details of that. Um, you know, Nima was a pleasure for us to deal with and um, you know, we're really hoping that we can position ourselves as a, as a preferred partner to Nima, uh, but I can't really comment on um, how many others were in the race. Yeah, fair enough. And all the data you, you know, inherited, I think you mentioned it was about $20 million worth. You know, if you could just elaborate to people, you know, how, like, how, how does that, how valuable is that to you and, and how are you incorporating that into the current geological model? Like, is it old information, outdated information you're trying to digitize? Is it, you know, other stuff that was never looked at? Yeah, well, um, so on this slide, it just, it summarizes some of the surface data that we've got millions of dollars worth of surveys. and. You know, geophysics is, a, is as much an art as it is a science in that, you know, half of these surveys they did and realised that they don't really work, they don't identify the mineralisation. So those learnings have saved us millions of dollars. That now we know what not to do. We also know that things like CSAMT and 3DIP really lights up the mineralisation. So you know, they're, they're going to be our preferred geophysical methods moving forward. Uh, similarly, um, you know, so there's been soil samples, there's been RAB samples and They've um, both sterilised areas and they're really lit up areas. So uh, it, it's just a, a wealth of information for us to have at our disposal. Similarly with the, um, the historical drilling, so, so many drill holes, they've, they've done a great job of exploring the outcrops. Um, however, the outcrops account for about 15% of the whole um, of the whole licence. So where, where there's real gaps is where there isn't outcropping um, geology. And you can tell by the names of the prospects of where there's known gold, North Hill. Agilera Hill, uh, Silica Ridge. Basically, where, where there's a hill or a ridge, they found gold. And then this sand cover in the Sandman gets its name from the sand dunes um, covering the majority of the tenure. And historically, they had a few trouble, a few problems uh, penetrating unconsolidated sand dunes. However, you know, coming from Australia, where we've got typically got 50 meters of unconsolidated sand, um, you know, in our deserts, we're not too worried about drilling uh, under the sand dunes, and we know that you know, there's ways to case holes. Um, doesn't add much of a cost at all. It's just more about having a driller that has expertise uh, in drilling under these unconsolidated sand dunes. So there lies the opportunity for us. Um, these massive gaps in exploration where we've got geophysical anomalies, geochem anomalies, and no drill holes. So it do yeah. doesn't get much more exciting. And were some of those your drill holes you inherited, were they previously include, you know, not in the resource that you're updating, or is it? So a, a lot of the um, a lot of the Newmont drilling was actually twinning um, the old holes, but they certainly did expand on the resource um, in in a couple of areas. So you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the resource does grow on the back of just incorporating that additional data. And it's also going to have um, the resource at a point where when we when Goldball does the additional drilling in January, February, March, we'll be able to really quickly um, update our resource um, based on this current modelling that we're doing to add our data to it. Nice. So you might have two resource updates in six months, maybe. So that would be nice. Yeah, definitely the one in late January based on existing data. And then um, say we'll have three months of drilling, and then we probably need a month or um, two for laboratory results at the moment. And then it'd be very nice for us to be looking at an updated resource again, obviously depending on our results. Yeah. And then the current deposits within the, the bigger Sandman resource statement, how 
far apart are they roughly? So um, on, on this map you can see we, we've got a, a small resource at North Hill, Silica Ridge, South East Pediment and Abel Knoll. Um, so those four, um, the, the, you can, the scale bar is five kilometres down here. But many of those resources remain open both at depth and along strike. And Southeast Penament, for example, we've got more than 10 kilometres of strike along this major structure with not that many drill holes um, along that under the sand dunes. So that's a, that's a really interesting structure. Um, North Hill, you know, we chose to do our, our first IP survey up there just because the resource is open in just about every direction. And there's some phenomenal historical grades there. Although the resource is one gram a tonne, you know, we've got up to 80 uh, to 100 grams a tonne over narrow intervals. And the sulphide or the source of this um, oxide surface mineralization hasn't really been explored for. There's been very little deep drilling. So we're certainly encouraged by looking for the source and the feeder, like looking for the mother load um, that's, that's really produced these small deposits that ha have been defined to date. Um, Lin Lindsay Craig, our exploration manager, is on site now. I was out there a couple of days ago and I was just blown away by the, the level of alteration that we're seeing at the surface. Uh, we were shown around by an old prospector, Mr. Sweeney, and he, he was carrying around a bucket of samples with visible gold that he got from around this, this 10 mile area. It was just sensational. It's very rare that you see visible gold, let alone mm. gold that was like one inch or you know, four, four centimeters big, flakes of gold that are just on these like structures. So you know, Mr. Sweeney is just blown away by the fact that there hasn't been hardly any drill holes where he got those samples from. And you know we intend to do something about that and um, test these projects this, I'd say yeah. over the next six months. It's nice, everyone Everyone enjoys seeing some visible gold. Um, Absolutely. And so, you, you know, you, like one big plus is you have this large like plan of operations, exploration permit. So the map we see now, um, does this drill permit cover this whole area? Like, I'm just wondering it, it if does. it just covers the where the deposits are or whether you can drill the step out targets now. Yeah. It, it, it covers a whole lot. Um, you know, I think earlier on in the presentation there was a polygon uh, and that the plan of operation covers the polygon in, in this image. So all those prospects, all those targets are covered by our plan of operation and um, you know, Newmont just have done such a stellar job at all those environmental baseline studies. We've got water monitoring data. You know, it cost, as a junior it would cost us probably five million dollars I'd say. To, um, to replicate what they've done and that, that's done you know, forever. We can rely on those water monitoring holes and that they're accessible. We can rely on those, those cultural programs and surveys that they did, um, the environmental baselines. It's just wonderful environmental impact assessment data that we don't have to do. Yeah, fair enough. Thanks for that, Artie. Thank you. Um, what is the depth and the shape of the uh, current Sandman resource? Uh, and how costly it will be to uh, upgrade the inferred resources? So most of our um, resources are actually in the measured and indicated category. We have very little in inferred. Um, that's because the, the spacing of the drilling has been very close. So if we look at um, this North Hill pros pros prospect, this is indicative of all of the resources. So the, the circa one gram a ton resource is virtually sitting at the surface. That's this, um, this red polygon and um, it, it's very gently dipping. And this is um, true of the other resources. So I'd say this is indicative, um, very low strip ratio and um, very, very good, very positive metallurgical recoveries. Uh, so it's, it's all shaping out really nicely. Now we just need more ounces. Thank you. And uh, what did you uh, mention uh, about the uh, drilling and other exploration activity after the resource estimate? Um, sure. you, you had a graph uh, year by year and meters. Can you, on the presentation, can you comment on that, please, again? Sure. So 974 drill holes, and of those, the majority have been drilled in those red boxes in the in the previous um, slide. So very few exploration exploration drill holes. They they've literally found these outcropping hills that have gold mineralization, and they've started resource drilling around um, those outcropping gold occurrences. And that's what we've seen in the pre 1990s drilling. Then here, um, the, during the Newmont phase. The majority of the Newmont drilling um, was essentially replicating that. Most of pre-1990s work was RC, whereas Newmont um, did the majority diamond, and they also did um, 
modern, modern day QAQC, which which wasn't um, happening in the 80s. And they they came out, I believe, with a very similar um, number. So this was good quality work back in the 90s. But a lot of this is just duplication of this work. Newmont um, had a vision that they were going to um, to mine it like a um, like a satellite deposit and process the ore at their Twin Creeks um, facility. So they they have a, a very close um, operating mine, and um, a lot of their work was at that kind of level. So on this project, you can see so on this slide, you see where Twin Creeks Turquoise Ridge facility is. That facility is no longer owned by Newmont. That's in the um, Nevada Gold Mines joint venture between Barrick and Newmont. Um, so as a result, um, this project became available, and um, the the facility didn't know what no longer were we're looking at toll, toll treating smaller operations. So for us, we've got this really high level data set, um, you know, almost at feasibility level. But again, we're looking at adding more ounces. So our media focus is adding more ounces and, and you know surpassing that magic million and that's what my team has been engaged to do in 2021, finding more ounces. And then once we found those ounces, we can work out um, what a feasibility study is going to shape up to look like. Thank you. Campbell? Sure. Uh, does Newmont maintain royalties or clawback agreements? Are there other royalties on the property? Newmont has no royalties because there are other existing royalties on this asset. Um, the royalties vary from half a percent. Um, up to about 3% uh, and they, they vary depending on um, the particular area within the large land holding. Uh, Frontier did a great job of consolidating the land holding. Um, it was previously owned by over 10 different land holders. So, and depending on which part of the project, there are different um, royalty obligations. And there is no clawback. It's 100% hours with no strings attached. Um, also, this district used to be chopped up into checkerboards everything been utilized? Yes, it is still a checkerboard. However, we own all of the mineral rights um, throughout that land holding, thanks to our deal with Newmont. Newmont controls the checkerboard still, uh, and um, really and only way, the only way to overcome that checkerboard is to do a, a deal with Newmont. So fortunately, um, this land holding has been fully consolidated, and um, the mineral rights within our entire polygon are owned by our company. Okay. Um, and has any historical metallurgical work been done? Uh, are you go, go going deeper refractory sulfides? Uh, and uh, is that an issue? Um, so yes, uh, extensive metallurgical work program was conducted by Newmont. Um, they did massive bulk samples and they treated um, the ore at their Twin Creeks facility. So we know we've got over 90% recoveries um, from the oxide material at the surface. To date, um, essentially all of our resource is oxide. So I can't really comment on whether the sulfide will be refractory or not because our current resource is oxide. Um, there's a concern just about uh, uh, outstanding shares. Um, if you want to comment uh, on, on your share count and uh, the, the deal paid to the vendor. Any color on that? Mm -hmm. yeah, maybe the history of the share count and the, what it was prior to the acquisition and the financing. Sure. So we um, we inherited a shell called QX Metals. Um, and that was mid-year. And at the time, QX Metals share price was like three and a half, five cents. So um, we've added a lot of value to those shareholders of QX Metals. It's gone from five cents to 50 cents over the last six months. Uh, we currently have 67 million shares on issue and we own 100% of all of our assets. Um, so there's been um, the shares that we've issued have been for the big boards um, acquisition and the, um, the other two acquisitions, were no, there were no shares. It was $4 million US cash for Sandman and Cody's 50 grand um, per annum. And we don't have any other um, shares that are currently outstanding or to be issued. Um, so this is um, this is a reflection of, of where we're at today. With seven you said million dollars you own outright. Yes, we own 100% of the mineral rights to all three assets. That, most juniors can't say that. So that, mm -hmm. I think that's the answer in a nutshell. Uh, Stuart? <laughs> yeah, and so the Q1 program, you know, the resource update, Jan, the drilling, how many meters are you planning on drilling and you know what's the range of depths like you know you mentioned the current resource all oxide so say it's down to 150 meters are you going to 
do some 300 meter holes here or what's the plan? Yeah, so our exploration manager is currently um, on site refining um, all those questions. And uh, one, once we ascertain that, we will be sharing it with the market and I anticipate that will probably be sometime in early January. We're also waiting on our IP results because that will dictate um, you know, how deep we drill at Northfield, for example. But I anticipate we'll be drilling on average between 100 and 300 metre holes. Uh, we, we know that there's um, a number of uh, areas in our current resources which have ended in mineralisation. Uh, for example, we think it's southeast pediment where we've got a hole ending in 10 grams a tonne gold. Um, and that's just an obvious example where we intend to go back and keep, keep drilling. Like, let's see if that has legs at depth. So uh, I, I d there definitely will be some circa 300 metre holes because we think there's a massive gap in exploration historically, less than 100 metres. There, there's exploration upside within our known prospects is going to be less than 100 metres, um, sorry, more than 100 metres. And then um, in the early stage greenfields targets that we've got, uh, I, I do anticipate there'll be a couple of shallow drill holes testing some geophysical targets as well. Yeah, I'm really, yeah. I'm really excited by um uh, by our IP. This 3D IP is so underutilized uh, in this country, yet it just really lights up the additional mineralization like a Christmas tree. Um, so we're, we'll be putting our announcement out as soon as um, David, our geophysicist, has had a chance to process the 3D IP results at North Zealand. I'd be very surprised if multiple drill targets don't emerge out of that data. Mm -hmm. And then on, if you just touch quickly on the Coyote property, property was that already yeah. in the company before the No, new that, that, that's, that's a new acquisition. It's going to close either today or tomorrow. I think it's just pending my signature. Um, so that, that's one that we're really excited about. We were introduced to it by a, um, an ex-Newmont geologist who basically said that you know, Newmont looked at it and we, we, we just love it and um, you know, for, for corporate reasons, we're not going for it. So we, um, we had a look at it. We weren't really looking for more early stage assets and we were just blown away by the, the prospectivity of Cody. The fact that you've got um, you know, over 10 grams a tonne sitting at the surface and there's a mineralized structure that we can see that goes extends for 500 meters in an east-west direction and then it goes under cover. So again, we've got this opportunity because of this cover and we're, we're not shy about cover and that's why we're, we're going to employ the 3D IP at Cody as well because when you have sulfides, when, when the gold is associated with the sulfides, just 3D IP in Nevada and Utah just works sensationally in lighting up our drill targets. So we, we think the more 3D IP we use essentially, the, um, the smarter our drilling is going to be. We're going to be drilling less dud holes and um, we're going to be drilling more you know, genuine targets via deploying 3D IP before we start drilling blindly. Yeah. And, and how much drilling had been completed at Cody and roughly how many metres of significant intercepts uh, are there already? Yeah, very little drilling um, has been completed at Cody. There's, um, and, and we also inherited very little um, data for a data room, like you know, basically you know, almost nothing. So we're kind of starting from scratch. Um, I'd say there's less than, less than a dozen very shallow drill holes um, and uh, probably a quarter of those hit significant intersections. And we're also um, looking to drill a lot deeper than those historical um, drill holes were because we think sometimes in the surface gold can be leached or depleted um, due to the, the groundwater table. So we're looking to go deeper than, than they ever drilled before. We're also expanding our radius uh, and um, we'll, we'll be announcing more, more information on Cody in Q quarter one next year because we've got Two of our geologists are going to head out there in January, in the first week of January, to do mapping, soil sampling, and that their work is essentially going to determine where the 3D IP is. I think our IP team is locked in for the third week of January, um, and then um, IP survey will take a few weeks, and from there we'll have our drill targets. Yeah, and then what's the schedule for relogging of the historical data at Cody? Um, so again, we don't really have much data, so we've we're, 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 I'd say for Cody, in my mind, we're starting from scratch. So we're going to build um, up Cody from, you know, from our geologist work in, in January, February. Uh, yeah. And then we'll be drilling based on that that science because there, there is really a lack of data on that project. It's not like Sandman where we've inherited $20 million worth of data. Mm -hmm. At um, Cody, the opportunity is the fact that it hasn't been very much done before. Yeah. And just one last question from me for Hannah back to Campbell. But in terms of kind of dollar spend, how would you break up, you know, say the next 12 months across the three projects? I'd say approximately 75% will be going to Sandman. 
and 25% will be split between Big Balls and Cody, depending on um, the next round of geophysics at both of those. Yeah, thanks for that. Camel? Great, well, thank everyone for tuning in. We'll be asking you for feedback. Please uh, share a few words, a few lines. Uh, what an incredible story. Uh, basically, uh, no one really knows about it too much. So we're pleased to be one of the first to uh, get you to a, a broader market. And um, hopefully we'll do it again uh, next year, for sure. This is our last webinar, and uh, hopefully maybe your last webinar or Zoom. <laughs> so, uh, I'm certainly Zoomed out for 2020. Um, so anyway, with that, a a, a closing statement. Um, if you can, you know, why should we buy your shares tomorrow morning? So. Well, our IP, results, Monday, our, our, our IP results for um, North Hill are imminent, and um, as is our drill program and upgraded 43101. I'd be really surprised if um, if that resource doesn't grow just based on the historical data that um, we've mm -hmm. we've had Newmont do. So, so much news flow coming up, and um, just you know, reasons to buy. So, I look forward yeah. to having you on as our shareholders and and keeping the market updated regularly next year as we continue our aggressive exploration and acquisition program to add ounces and if you could end with that slide about how we can reach you for further questions that, that we had. sure our website is an easy one www.goldbull.ca excellent thank you thanks campbell thanks, thanks to you. Bye now. yeah bye